Hi, my name is Marcin Jakubowski. I'm the founder of Open Source Ecology, coming in here from California, actually. We've got a project on the ground in Missouri called Factory Farm, and we're about developing the Global Village Construction Set, which is a basic set of tools for, for all, the, all the needs a civilization might have to provide its food, housing, energy, the entire infrastructure for living and thriving from local resources. Open source ecology is based on, on the open source movement, which has been translated into open source hardware development, but the concept is about open collaborative development of various critical infrastructures of society in order to make harmonious coexistence between humans and nature. Open source works essentially in the fact that you're creating distributive economic systems. That means instead of only a few people benefiting from the inventions of, of building upon all that society has learned to date, I mean, any invention is simply a little addition, typically, on a large pool of knowledge that's already there in society. So uh, in today's society, we like to appropriate that and, and claim it as our own, which, which uh, objectively speaking, c can be considered quite arrogant because we are already using all this stuff that came before us. So open source refers to, to an open development system where instead of patenting, we're publishing for everybody's benefit, not just for our benefit, but for everybody to the, to the point that we create truly free enterprise, the, a place where people can compete on an even playing field because there is no generation of monopolies by, by artificial protection mechanisms. Flexible fabrication, for that, the general scenario here is that imagine what would happen if we had a global repository of design for just about anything. And we're talking now not about some trash products that everyone try, tries to push on you, but, but state-of-art examples, just the best practices for everything. Like what's the best practice car, tractor, renewable energy equipment, and, and fabrication equipment, everything. Uh, imagine we had access to all the blueprints for that and then we can manufacture that locally because you can share that over the internet. Not only that, you can share computer-aided manufacturing files which can be used with computer-controlled fabrication equipment from CNC, that's, that stands for Computer Numerical Control, CNC milling, lathing, CNC torch tables, circuit fabrication, all those kinds of files can be shared globally for local production. So imagine a setting where now the whole world can collaborate, use the best practices, and the fabrication can return to the local communities instead of being sent over to remote places. So that's the, that's the concept of flexible fabrication. Oh, Oberlin and Cleveland, nice. this uh, trip has been very positive. It's uh, met a lot of people who are on the ground in terms of wanting to develop the, the local economies. The permaculture movement is extremely strong here. There's a whole base of fabrication manufacturing that's strong, perhaps dying, but when I think of that, it's, it's the perfect place for open source fab labs, the flexible fabrication facilities coming in. Our package relies 100% on solar energy, whether that's solar concentrator electric for electrical power generation or bio, pelletized biomass fuels for powering engines and other devices. Well, our package promotes a 100% closed loop carbon cycle. So in that itself, we're addressing the, the climate change issues because we're not putting any new carbon into the atmosphere. We're harvesting plants, which are then, then burned, if we're talking about pelletized biomass, but then plants take that carbon out again. So it's a fully closed, environmentally conscious way to, to generate power, which is uh, one of the key issues in society. Um, to date, we have only one full product release, but we're working on, on a whole range of things from food, energy, housing, uh, I mean, agriculture, production, renewable energy and fuels, just about anything. And to date, we only have one full, full prototype, it's full, full product release, that is, that is the, the compressed earth brick press, which is a fully automatic machine can produce up to 16 bricks per minute and uh, right now we're working on, on the full product release of an open source tractor combined with, uh, with a saw pulverizer so that, that 
package all together could work for effective construction with the CEB, the compressed earth brick press, um, that producing building material and the tractor providing things like mechanical power or assistance for agriculture. Those are our near-term tools. Um, there's many in there, up to induction furnaces, combines, uh, cars and bulldozers and, and fabrication equipment, robotic arms and even aluminum extraction from clay on a local level. Just a, 50 different technologies that, that are pretty important, mm -hmm. economically significant means of producing the things we need to live. So uh, what we propose is the whole tool chain that allows you to start with scrap metal resources like steel or other metals, uh, melt them down with an induction furnace followed by processes such as casting, forging, rolling, and with that you can generate virgin steel, then you can precision machine it with things like CNC lathing, uh, milling, uh, you can do computer controlled torch tables for cutting and so you have the means to start from from scrap, go into into virgin metal, precision machine it and then on top of that you've got other fabrication means like 3D printing, uh, 3D scanning, which can then be fed back into the systems to, to reproduce the, the same machines. And then of course you've got things like welding, uh, open source torch welder, um, laser cutter. Another big one is a uh, iron worker machine which allows you to, to cut and punch holes in thick metal and so forth. And basic circuit fabrication with a CNC circuit mill. So just about all the tools that we need there to start from scrap, work, work that into virgin, virgin metal, and then build things like tractors, cars, anything else that we have in a, in a complete set. So in this scenario, we have the concept that the machines can not only make products, but also the machines can make new replicas of those machines. So for example, the torch table that we built is designed such that it can produce a copy of itself uh, from the steel that you put on the top of the torch table to be cut and, and the replicator concept is big like for example RepRap the 3D printer has already shown that the printer could print a set of its own parts uh, of its own plastic joint parts for itself so the self-replication on the technological front is a big point for a low-cost reproduction and production of the, the technology base that we need. We are missing out in terms of our absolute creative potential. And the nature of the Global Village construction set is to provide people with the tools of production, of, uh, not only fabrication, but producing the food, the housing, energy, fuels, and a lot of other things so that yeah, the wealth comes back to the, to the people. Uh, people feel empowered about their environment and avoid the environmental degradation because the ultimate message is technology should be a way for us to connect to nature. If we're using the local resources, relying much more on our immediate environments to provide all that we need, then we start to respect our environment much more. So it's definitely about reinventing culture uh, from the consumer culture to a culture of makers and where people are actually the producers one more time of, the, of their own environments as opposed to being dependent on whatever you buy at the store and which is a totally empowering concept for anybody who sees that like for myself uh, it would be the last thing if I were to guess that I'd be building tractors and <laughs> compressed earth brick presses and other things right now um, but for me personally I figure that wow, we have this amazing productive capacity. Right now it's being basically abused by this production system that's global and, and not really meeting needs, designed for obsolescence, lots of these problems where it's all, it's all about profit, not, not really human service, and people working longer and longer hours. Well, that's not what technology is supposed to be about. It's supposed to make our lives easier. So um, personally, I engage in this experiment of, of being a total maker in order to create my own environment. and, and at much lower cost so that I could ultimately be free. That's my goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.